Hello everyone, welcome to Broadview. My name is Joseph. Today, let's travel back in time to over 3,000 years ago to meet one of the most powerful and mysterious women in all of ancient Egypt. That's right, today we're going to talk about Queen Nefertiti. How could a woman who had such unprecedented power and fame across Egypt disappear so mysteriously and suddenly? Stick around to explore all the theories that have swirled around about her life and death for centuries, and maybe even uncover the answer to what really happened to this famous queen. Before we get started, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our content. And be sure to hit the bell icon so that you won't miss any of our future videos. Now, without further ado, let's meet Queen Nefertiti. It seems that mystery shrouds Nefertiti's life since her earliest days. We can't even be completely sure where exactly she's from or who exactly her relatives are. There are two main theories about her origins. Some historians believe that she was a princess from the Mitanni Kingdom in northern Syria. The other theory is that she was either the niece or daughter of a top advisor named Ai, who later became the penultimate pharaoh of Egypt's 18th dynasty. Either way, she was definitely from a very privileged and perhaps even royal background. What we do know is that Nefertiti married her husband, Pharaoh Amenhotep IV, when she was 15. Together, they started a huge religious and social upheaval in Egypt. They tried to make their kingdom monotheistic, worshipping only the sun god Aten. The couple even moved the Egyptian capital northward to Amarna to be closer to the sun. Obviously, Nefertiti and her husband's endeavors didn't make them popular with everyone. But somehow, despite all her controversy, Nefertiti only got more powerful. She was queen during ancient Egypt's wealthiest era, which in and of itself must have been quite nice for her. And based on artifacts that have been uncovered over the years, it's possible she exercised just as much power as her husband. A co-pharaoh, if you will. She was named Akhenaten's great royal wife, his favorite and most beautiful wife. She was depicted in sculptures and carvings looking nearly identical to her husband and almost always by his side. This was virtually unheard of before for wives of the pharaoh. She was even portrayed in artwork defeating an enemy in battle, leading the worship of Aten, commanding a chariot and wearing the crown of a pharaoh. I'm sure it helped her cause that she was considered one of Egypt's most beautiful, graceful and charismatic women too. And she knew this. The name Nefertiti literally means the beautiful woman has come. But it doesn't end here. She later added another name for herself, Nefer Neferaten, which means beautiful are the beauties of Aten, a beautiful woman has come. So obviously she didn't lack any self-confidence. Even later in life, Nefertiti was incredibly well connected politically and socially. She always had a strong relationship with her husband who was also the father of King Tut with another consort and two of Nefertiti's own daughters became queens later on. She definitely had it all for an ancient Egyptian woman. At least this is what we can gather from what's left in the history. Then what was the problem you might be asking? How did such a successful, powerful and beautiful queen with this perfect life end up becoming part of one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of all time? Well, here's the real kicker. 12 years into her husband's Akhenaten's reign, Nefertiti suddenly disappears from all historical records without a trace. There isn't even a single mention of where she went, what happened to her, how she died, or indeed any acknowledgement of her existence. It's like someone erased her off the face of the planet. No one has ever been able to find her tomb or any clue of where she's buried. So let's get into what could have happened to her. Now, a lot of historians believe that Nefertiti died or was banished, and that's why she's not in any historical records. Some suggest she died of ordinary causes, while others theorize that she committed suicide after one of her daughters died during childbirth. There's also a theory that Akhenaten banished Nefertiti after she gave birth to six daughters without ever producing a male heir. But these theories aren't very fun, nor can they be substantiated. In all sources, Nefertiti seems to be far too loved by Akhenaten to be banished. If she died of natural causes or some ordinary illness, shouldn't there be at least a mention of her death, or perhaps funeral proceedings that came afterward for such a beautiful and beloved queen? Wouldn't there be records of a burial location? And if she were banished, wouldn't this show up in some official record as well? Either of these events would be major moments in ancient Egyptian history and would have undoubtedly been also mentioned and alluded to in future records as well. Some people believe that Nefertiti didn't die during her husband's 12th reigning year, but rather assumed a new identity 
as his official co-regent under the name of Nefer Neferaten. If she did so, it would explain how her name completely disappeared from historical records, yet her death was never mentioned. She could have possibly wanted to erase any further record of her former identity to facilitate the rise to power and smooth any bumps in the road that could come from people knowing that she was Nefertiti. Taking this even further, it's possible that Smenkeret, the pharaoh who succeeded Akhenaten, was actually Nefertiti herself, disguised as a man. If you think this is way too far-fetched as a theory, you'd be surprised, because there was actually already a recorded incidence of this happening in the 15th century BCE. Back then, the female pharaoh Hapsetshut disguised herself as a man and even appeared in public with a ceremonial beard. So would it be so unbelievable for a woman as influential as Nefertiti to do the same thing and take over power after her husband's death? I don't think so. Thousands of years later, even Nefertiti's bust is subject to controversy and mystery. It's a very famous artifact. I'm sure you've seen at least pictures of it before. Archaeologist Ludwig Borchard dug it out of the banks of the Nile south of Cairo in 1912. But some people believe that he commissioned an artist to make the sculpture and based its likeness on that of his wife. Later on, dating methods suggested that this bust is probably 3,000 years old. But they uncovered another mystery. Under the plaster that covers the bust, there's a smaller stone sculpture of a woman who looks very different and less attractive. Who is she? And which is the accurate depiction of Nefertiti? Nobody knows. We may soon have a breakthrough in this mystery. In 2020, findings of an unpublished report seen by Nature showed that researchers led by archaeologist Mamdo Aldamadi used ground-penetrating radar, or GPR, to scan the area immediately around Tutankhamun's tomb. Excitedly, they identified a previously unknown corridor-like space a few meters from the burial chamber. It's clear that there seems to be something hidden on the other side of the north wall of King Tut's burial chamber. It's a long space in the bedrock at the same depth as Tutankhamun's burial chamber. According to the scans, it appears to be around 2 meters high and at least 10 meters long. There's good reason to think that this might be Nefertiti's tomb. For one, King Tut's burial chamber is uncharacteristically small, suggesting that there might be additional chambers around it taking up space. On the other hand, Nefertiti was both King Tut's father's favorite wife and the mother of King Tut's own wife. This makes it very reasonable to theorize that she'd be buried in the same area as King Tut. Although there are archaeologists who refute the results of these scans, I definitely don't think people should just brush off Mamdo's El Damadi's findings. There definitely needs to be more research and excavations of the area around King Tut's tomb. Are we maybe on the verge of solving the mystery of Nefertiti's death and final resting place? I guess we'll have to wait and see what the experts uncover next. As a side note, I really want them to excavate and explore the supposed cavity beneath the Sphinx. Well, that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and feel free to share any theories you may have in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.